Hey everyone, just a, a quick uh, the phone's gone. Got a little fire, keep us warm. The axe I showed the other day, not the Grantsfors, but the little one that I had in my Land Rover. So I've taken the stale out of that and just cleaning it up. But before anyone says anything, that's not my drill. That's the girlfriend's, okay? That's the missus's drill. But it's a nice little drill. It's a Makita. It's just nice for this job, you know, because I need something a little bit more tender. But a lot of people just take the um, angle grinder or something, you know, to clean up an old rusty axe. But if you get a wire wheel, and they generally just fit straight in the drill, you know? So you can just. Polish it up and it's not not too abrasive, it just gets it off. I'm gonna make the stale out of hang on. out of that. I've had that seasoning for a while, so it's nice and dry and it's hard. It's not perfect, but I'm just gonna you know it's not gonna be a perfect axe, I'm just gonna um knock a stale out of that and it'll be fine for me. So but yeah. This doesn't dig too much into the metal, it just polishes the rust off. And you can feed the metal afterwards. So this is it's an old one. I'm gonna change the handle on this. I've had this. I I forgot about it. My father nicked it off me and he uses a can opener for five years. He's living in a caravan. And uh, no electricity, no water on his land. And um he scares water from the river, you know? Um, and he nicked my knife off me. He's only a kid. And um, he used this as a can opener for five years. I was like, Dad, can I have the knife back? He's like, no, it's my can opener. I said, well, just go buy one. They're cheap enough. <laughs> He's like, no, it's my can opener. Bugger off. Like, oh. So, you know, he died. He's dead now. Died not long ago, so I got my knife back. So I'm thinking of putting um, a new handle on that. It's not the best metal, but it's a good knife. Yeah. When I was growing up, you could just go in and buy knives, big knives, at any age. You didn't have to do anything. So. Oh, by the way, when you're changing a stale, a handle, if you have a problem getting the, the old shaft out, you know, the old trick of, you know, you drill a bit out. You know, drill out around. It, if you've got a drift, they make a huge difference. They help a lot. They make the job real easy. You know, the small ones for the little bits, and then the big one for getting the job done. Then I'm good there. Not expensive either, but drifts are brilliant. So, a little steel wedge. Right, I'm going to make this, and I'll um. I'll put the camera back on when I'm done. See you later. Well, it's coming. I'm doing it all with my uh, little trusty axe. That needs a new style. It's just so hard to find good sales around here, you know, from the shops. They always sell just the junk, you know? So, so everything's internet order these days, isn't it? But it's coming. Look, it's not going to be that long, but uh, you know, some days you just feel like not really doing much. But I mean, a little project you can chip away at, sit by a fire, eat some food, you know, have a couple of glasses of wine, and just kick it back and just hit things with an axe. <laughs> so, okay, back in a minute. Hey guys, do you remember I built this Larson trap? I did a video, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I've got it on my channel. But it needs an update and it's, um, it's a heavy lump. I never meant this design, it was never meant to um, 
you know, to be carried around the place. It's just one for home, you know. Usually they make them lighter, so you can just bundle them in the pickup or car and drop them in where you got a problem. So I, I mean, I, I overbuilt this, but I did on purpose. So that's why. Um, anyway, I needed to get it off the floor. It's time to start using it again now because there's magpies everywhere. They've hatched through, and all the youngsters are just tearing everything up. But I need an easy way to move it around at home. So I got my hands on these. The school my kids go to through a, um, a, a TV standout. You know the ones they have in school, and it's like I don't know, just a great big frame on wheels, and they wheel the TV in and make the kids watch some um, nice indoctrination videos. You know, some good brainwashing stuff. Well, they were throwing it out, so I took it instead of the bin bed, and then on this side, I put some feet on it. Got to keep this off. I'm worried about it rotting. These aren't screwed on yet, but and then I'm going to put a. So I'm talking with this fag in my mouth again. I'm going to put a bar, a piece of timber from here down to there and stick it out. So it'll be like a wheelbarrow, you know. So I can just pick this end up and wheel it off into its place. And then I got these for it. These are from the pound shop. These are good bungees. So I'm going to put these in, um, you know, the pipe from the washing machine, you know, the, out, the outfill pipe. I'm going to tie that up to the side of the frame and then run this bungee then through it up to the top. So it's, it just looks a bit better, you know, and it's more concealed. And then I bought these. We've got a shop, TK Maxx, and it sells all seconds, you know, factory seconds not good enough to be sold in the main shops but it's all good stuff you know you'd be struggling to find a problem like here look little threads and little problems but 15 foot and the clamps so two of those were eight pound 7.99 so about 12 bucks that's good and here remember I did a video on this bushcraft knife I got problems with it, I'm not happy. First of all, I was impressed at first, but once you've taken the edge off it and used it, it's a nightmare to sharpen. An absolute nightmare. Horrible, horrible knife to sharpen. And then the steel, not steel, I always call it steel. But the rod came out of the handle. You know, I had to re-glue it in and, you know, I mean, uh, it's like I got better things to do, you know, I, you know, it wasn't, I didn't buy this for two quid on a boot sale, but, uh, and that, it's just a nightmare to use, for the, you know, to, to strike your sparks, horrible, horrible, it should have been up here, right at the top, so you could, Oh, I haven't got my tripod, but, you know, so you could put your thumb here and really get into it. But there, it's, you want to keep doing this, and it, it's just so tempting to put your thumb on top. It, you know, if you're a novice, you're going to cut your finger off. You're just going to take a lump off, guaranteed. I mean, I know what I'm doing, and it, it, it's everything I can take to not do that. It's a disaster. Horrible to sharpen. This fell to pieces. I'm trying to reshape the blade now. This is it's coming. But I don't have much time for messing around and you know, but then you know, more or, you know, the missus laughs at me because I say to her, I only have to look at this to make it sharp. You know, that's how easy it is. Anyway. So last and trap up last and trap update. I'm gonna Bolt them wheels down now. Put these new bungees on, and um, we'll get a set. And we're going to clear out a few of these bloody magpies. They're everywhere. Since I've been 
I, I had enough of the magpies and I started dealing with them. The small bird population has just gone wild. Absolutely, there's just so many small birds. You probably hear my videos all the time. It was never like that. I've been in this house for just over 10 years. And um, it was it was just dead before. Now they're, they're back and thriving. So I'm going to nail, I don't know, 10 or 20 now in the next month. And then I'll, I'll call it a day then for the year and leave them get on with it. I don't want to kill the last one, ever. But um, I'm just going to keep the numbers in check so they can, uh, you know, leave the other small birds alone, you know, when they're trying to breed and sit eggs. Okay. Oh, I suppose I got this to show you. Got some new apple trees. Cheap. This one's in blossom. I don't know if you can hear the song in the background. That'd be for Pete in Alaska. <laughs> Did you hear this song, Pete? This is a plum. I've had this for years. It's a vein, but it's flowered this year. I put it in a pot. I've dug it up again and um, stuck it in a pot. Obviously, a bad job. The wind's blown it over. I've got to find a new place to put it. I might stick it in with the bamboo. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with this, and I'll show you the last trap when it's finished. All right, ta.